Hello friends, through this video we will learn about midbrain syndromes. Difficult topics like midbrain syndromes can be made easy when learned conceptually. This video can be somewhat longer than my usual videos, but it is very important topic for MCQs as well as viva exams. So do watch full video. Instead of directly going to syndromes, just understand few important anatomical points of midbrain. So this is the cross section of midbrain at the level of superior colliculus. Here is cerebral aqueduct, surrounding it there is periaqueductal grey matter. All structures in brain stems are divided into bases, tegmentum and tectum. The concept is, bases contain tracts which are going down. So here it will be corticospinal tract and corticobulbar tract. Tegmentum will contain ascending tracts. So here we have our lamenisci. Actually there are four lamenisci, namely lateral, spinal, trigeminal and medial. Red nucleus are also present in tegmentum, which contains the fibers of superior cerebellar peduncle. Then coming to tectum, all cranial nucleus in brainstem are present in tectum of respective structures. So here is third cranial nucleus. And dorsally, there are superior colliculus. After originating, third nerve goes ventrally to exit brainstem. And at the level of inferior colliculus, there is fourth nerve nucleus. After originating, Fourth cranial nerve goes dorsally and it is only cranial nerve which goes dorsally after origin and it is also a very important MCQ point. Now let's come to our main topic that is midbrain syndromes. We will divide it into two. First is ventral midbrain syndromes and second is dorsal midbrain syndromes. Ventral syndromes means involvement of basis and tegmentum and dorsal syndrome means involvement of tectum. Ventral syndromes includes Weber syndrome, Claudius syndrome and Benedict syndrome. And dorsal syndrome includes North Nagel syndrome and Perinot syndrome. We will see all syndromes one by one conceptually. First is Weber syndrome. Here lesion is at base of the midbrain. So as you can see in the diagram, structures involved will be third cranial nerve and descending tracts including corticospinal and corticobulbar tracts. So clinical features will be ipsilateral lateral squint which is due to third nerve palsy then contralateral hemiplegia which is due to involvement of corticospinal tract then contralateral paralysis of lower part of face and tongue due to involvement of corticobulbar tract then there will be tosis due to paralysis of levator palpebral superioris which is supplied by third cranial nerve then pupil will be dilated and fixed and accommodation is lost on the same side of the lesion due to involvement of parasympathetic component of oculomotor nerve that is edinger vastpel nucleus. Next is Claudius syndrome. Here lesion is at tegmentum of the brainstem as shown in the figure. So structures involved will be third cranial nerve, red nucleus and fibers of superior cerebellar peduncle entering into the red nucleus. So signs will be all features of third nerve palsy which we discussed with contralateral cerebral ataxia and tremors due to involvement of superior cerebellar peduncles. Next is Benedict syndrome. Here lesion involves base plus tegmentum. So we can say that it is Weber plus Claudius syndrome. So structures involved will be third cranial nerve, red nucleus, superior cerebral peduncle and corticospinal tract. Additionally, there is also involvement of substantia nigra. So clinical features will be ipsilateral third nerve palsy contralateral hemiplegia with contralateral cerebellar features like ataxia and tremors and due to involvement of substantia nigra there will be movement disorders like hemichoria and athetosis. So these three were ventral midbrain syndromes. Now coming to dorsal midbrain syndromes. Dorsal syndromes are usually caused due to tumors. First is North Nagel syndrome. Here lesion is at dorsal midbrain that is at tectum. As you can see in the figure, so structures involved will be third cranial nucleus, either unilateral or bilateral, fibers of superior cerebellar peduncle, and vertical gaze center that is fourth cranial nucleus. Because we already discussed that fourth cranial nerve goes dorsally. Remember, friends, tegmentum structures like red nucleus are not involved. So signs and symptoms will be due to involvement of third and fourth nerve. There will be ocular palsies and paralysis of gaze, especially vertical gaze palsy. 
and ataxian tremors will be there due to involvement of superior cerebral peduncles. Last is Perinod syndrome. Here there is involvement of tectum and this is usually due to pineal gland tumor which lies above it. The structure involved is superior colliculus and it is characterized by upward gaze palsy which is also known as sunset sign or skewed deviation of the eye. Here eye movements are not much affected. This table shows summary of all midbrain syndromes. I hope you like the content. You can take screenshot if you want at this time. I recommend you to watch this video again and again because this topic is very difficult to retain. So friends, this was all about midbrain syndromes. Do like and share our video and also watch our other videos on various topics. Thank you.